Hey everybody, this is Ori from Astral Web, and this is the third video talking about Google Analytics conversions and goals. Um, so this, this video is probably one of the more important videos, and the reason for that is um, using just only using the regular tracking code of Google Analytics and using the, the data that is provided uh, is really not enough. Um, so it tells you about your browsers and your the the sources that people the mediums and sources that people came from to your website uh, and it gives you a lot of information but not enough. Um, so what we need to do is basically feed into Google a little bit more information to help us uh, better understand our users and better understand our conversions. So uh, when we think about conversions and goals, we really need to think about what the business. Uh, or the website is trying to accomplish, right? So if you're an e-commerce website, for example, you're trying to get a sale. Um, so someone you want someone to uh, find the product that's interesting for them, to go uh, add it to cart, to go to the checkout, pay uh, with a credit card or other way, and uh, basically submit a payment and for it to be successful. So that's a, a simple, simple goal for e-commerce. But into, in addition to that, uh, that's not the only goal. So you really need to think, even for e-commerce, there's many other goals for businesses. And I'll give you an example. Uh, another goal, maybe goal number two, uh, or conversion number two, would be someone that would maybe uh, write a review, right? So if someone writes a review and they share it on their Facebook, then maybe their friends or family see that. So you get more exposure. So that's that's a great goal to think about. Another one might be um, maybe someone uh, filling out the warranty registration form so you know uh, they purchased successfully and now you have a new contact. Maybe uh, a goal might be for more people to subscribe to your newsletter so you can um, update them and, and provide more, more information for them, things like that. So you really need to think about what is important. So uh, I just want to give an example or two. Uh, about other industries, non-e-commerce, for example. So, for example, our website, Astro Web, we're, we're a service company, and uh, we basically want to get more interested businesses that are in uh, the area of what we're trying to do to actually give us a call or uh, fill out our form so we can actually contact this lead or this person and actually, you know, work with them, and then, you know, that's how we do business. So, for us, filling out a form or a phone call is one of the most important leads. Um, absorbing, you know, this content is is uh, important. So, for example, I'm making this video right now, and um, my my goal for this video is for people to actually view the video and learn. Uh, my other goal is for people to actually comment and and uh, you know to learn more and ask questions and I can improve my content and people can learn more, uh, etc. So um, you really need to think about what you're trying to do. Um, is my goal um, you know important for the user? Is my goal important for uh, you know for our business? Is it a mix? Are there many many different other things? So once you do that, you have to actually go to analytics. Uh, and feed them more information, okay? So what you want to do is you want to go to your website view, you want to click on admin, and you want to go to the goal section, right, under your specific view, okay? And what you want to do now is basically add a new goal and set it up and define what is your goal. So for example, um, your goal might be, you know, one of these, placing an order, creating an account, Maybe signing up to the newsletter, or contacting us, or getting you know driving directions if you're a local a local store, or maybe just visiting the contact page, right? Things like that. So, uh, one second. Just got a sip of water. Um, so, what you need to do, um, and th this video also one more thing is uh, showing you how to set up basic goals and conversions. The, the next videos will focus on the actual coding side of how you provide the e-commerce tracking or how you provide offline uh, tracking to convert into online. So here, we're just going to do some basic things. So once you set up your specific, you choose your, your template, um, or you can choose custom, you'll have to define based on this basic type of goal, let's say, um, let's say it's a contact us, okay? So if I click on next, you'll be able to define it simply 
via the admin either on has someone visited a specific page. So for example, maybe your form, after someone fills out your contact form, they get redirected to a thank you page. So if so, I'd click on destination, click on next, and type in the page, maybe thank you.php, right? Once you do that, you can sign, assign a monetary value. What that means is if you know that every single person, let's say every, uh, every person that fills out a form you work with and, and every person you work with, uh, you make $100, then you would put that in. Now, let's say um, every, every, let's say, 10 people that, that fill out a form, only one becomes your customer and they're worth $100. So again, you would basically say that every person that fills out their form is worth $10, OK? Now, what you can also do is click on the funnel. So a funnel is basically helping you understand what the steps that lead up to that conversion to, let's say, filling out that form are. And uh, we'll go into that in one of the other videos. But in short is, let's say, um, if you, you think that if you want to monitor more closely the data of the people that go from your product page to contact page, or let's say product page to cart page to contact page, you can kind of uh, uh, set those up, these funnel, these steps from page to page to page. And if you set that up, you can later on evaluate the people who drop off on the way. So maybe a lot of people came to your product page and um, they moved on to your cart page, but never went to the next page. So you can kind of evaluate why people went one step forward, uh, but never went all the way. And we'll go over in detail and show you examples in the next videos, OK? So once you set up a goal, you'd actually click on the verify this goal. What that does is it looks at the past seven days data. And, if you, and it tries to help you understand if you actually wrote something correctly. So if that goal happened prior, um, let's remove the funnel for a second. Um, here it says I have a 0% conversion rate. So I did, this goal that I'm setting up right now did not happen in the past seven days. Now, if it's a new goal or if it's a new website, it's okay to have a 0%. But if it's something you thought happened prior and you verified your goal and it says 0%, you may have made either like a typo or something like that. So for example, we don't even have a thank you page. But if my goal was for someone to go to the contact page, if you notice, astrowebinc.com slash contact slash. So I would just type in slash contact, right? And if I verify now, let's go here, one second. Let's do this slash contact. You can notice that I do have a 2.71% conversion rate on the people who visited my contact page. Maybe out of them, some of them called us. Maybe someone went and looked for driving directions, right? So I, I know now that I definitely configured this correctly for this contact page. So I click on save and my goal is there. So let me show you again one more uh, goal. Okay, so the, the first one was to show you how to define based on the destination. Maybe my goal was if someone visited more than, let's do a test, more than, um, was on my website for more than, let's say, 10 minutes. So I'd basically do here duration greater than 10 minutes. I'd verify the goal, and again, it works. So I'd click on create. Let's show another one. Another goal by default is pages per session. So maybe I have a blog, for example. And um, maybe it's, uh, my goal is for people to be engaged, people to enjoy my content. So if some people come and they only view one article and they leave immediately, maybe they're not interested in the way I write, for example. So what you can do is say, I want to define a goal as someone that uh, reads more than, let's say, three of my pages, right? Okay, and the last one by default is an event, right? So an event we're going to go in the next video. But basically, what an event is, is 
you can plug in via your your uh, website via code that you can plug in additional information via JavaScript and what that does is you can trigger certain other elements for example maybe a click on a button on a video player or maybe a click on a specific area will trigger this JavaScript to throw in more information to kind of feed um, a um, basically to feed more data into analytics and to track an event. So events are really, really powerful and we'll have a specific video for this in one of the next videos. Uh, it'll it'll be quite a few videos down, down the road, uh, but we'll basically tag it event tracking and goals video. But it basically an event is, it could be something like, for example, something like someone clicked on the send button, right? So for example, if I fill out a form, but it's not correct, right? It's not correct, and I click on the send button, I'll get a, a, a um, validation error, you see right here? So the event could be that someone clicked on send, but it's not necessarily a goal because someone didn't fill it up, out correctly. So if you, if you kind of think about it, you can have different clicks or different events that happen. Um, maybe an event might be, I'll give you another example, a better example. We have articles. So maybe if, if I have this article right here, maybe an event might be that someone actually read my article. So how do I know someone read my article? If they just visited and they left, I can set up via code that if someone scrolls down at least halfway, I can figure out that there's a good chance that they probably read a good amount of my article. And then I can Based, basically here, I can say if they arrive to this section, I can throw an event and know that they at least consume this article. So uh, we'll go into many more details in the next videos, but that's the idea, okay? Great. So um, these are the default um, kind of simple ways of setting up goals. Now, with events, uh, you can set up a much more detailed goals, right? And you'll have to know a little bit coding or have some webmaster to help with that. Uh, E-commerce, the same. E-commerce, you're going to have to feed in additional information about your order. Uh, you can't fill out the, the personal name or any per, uh, identifiable uh, per, personal information, but you can feed your uh, total amount. You can feed the uh, city they purchase in. You can feed all of the IDs, the SKUs, the product names, the categories, so you can really gather more and more information. It's really a great, great thing, but you will need to have some coding. And in most major platforms like OS Commerce or Shopify or Magento, the, the platforms are already set up to feed that additional information. As long as uh, what you do is you go to the e-commerce settings in analytics, you turn it on yes, and you save, and then uh, of course analytics is installed. So. That's kind of the main idea of how you set up. Now, uh, the last part of this video shows you how to actually look at the information, right? So we set up a goal, everything's good, right? So now, now that we set up our goals, now in most sections on the left-hand side here, for example, now I'm looking at the geolocation of my visitors, I can see under this conversion, and I selected my contact form, for example, or let's say, the new goal we created, read at least three pages, right? So now I can see by country, for example, okay, uh, how, ma how many people fill out the form. But the, the thing is, because we just set up this goal, we just set up this goal today, there's no data. So any new goals you set up, the data will start gathering only immediately after you set up. So now we don't have. So let's look at a goal that was set up prior which is people filled out the contact form. So if you notice, um, basically this is the average. So I can see how many people fill out my contact form in the, the uh, date range, right? So out of the nine total in my date range, eight of them filled out from Taiwan, right? Right here. Now, um, that basically means that, that um, obviously 85% of my traffic was from Taiwan and 88% of the people actually fill out the form. So I actually have a good number. So that means maybe I can look into Taiwan more, for example, okay? Now let's say I'm looking at some, uh, my traffic sources, where are the places that people came from the outside of my website into my website and filled out my form. So for example, I can look at Google 
organic, right? So out of Google Organic, there was 67% of the people that visited my website, but only 33% of the entire forms filled out, okay? So for example, um, Yahoo Organic, right, had 7% of the visitors, but I had 11% uh, forms filled out. So you can start looking into this data and readjusting your uh, marketing efforts and making decisions based on this. Now again, these are pretty small numbers for this, but once you have higher numbers or you go back larger date date ranges, you can make conclusions. So simple things might be like um, maybe you're paying for advertising and you paid, let's say, a thousand dollars on your advertising, but you had only one conversion, right? And only one person filled out your form, and that person is only worth for you ten dollars. So you know that you lost nine hundred ninety dollars, and you need to either optimize your ad campaign or stop it and take that money and put it somewhere else. Um, so we're going to go more and more detail in next and next videos, but this is the basic idea. And um, some of the future videos we're going to create are really going to go in detail of the both coding on event tracking and e-commerce and looking at the data, especially funnels um, and uh, uh, many other things. So we'll kind of go into that. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you.